I'm out this morning on the trail at Wildwood on this, the Mongoose Ledge X2 kind of half project version. I'll put a link down in the description, maybe even on your screen depending upon your device, but the reason this is kind of a half upgrade, kept a lot of the factory parts. The factory drivetrain's still here, the ProRest, the factory shock, the seat. What I did swap was what I felt necessary. I lightened up the handlebars, that's not actually necessary, but I lightened those up. An air fork, we'll talk more about that in just a second and hydraulic brakes. Oh, and also race face Chester pedals to get a little better grip, actually a lot better grip over those factory pedals. And for those of you that have been waiting my worst e-bike on the market video coming, I finally got footage recovered, quite a bit of footage I was actually able to recover. So that's coming and all good and the reason kind of delayed even further, I am a systematic person. I do things in an order. I don't like to get outside that order. Then I realized, wow, I'm actually taking so long here. I'm going to get out on the trail today and cover this. Not this bike, not a re-review of this bike. This is a bike that, as you know from my previous video, I set out for over three months in the elements. Why would I even do this? Well, I've seen people comment that these big box bikes, upgraded or non-upgraded, just can't hold up outside, that they're going to rust themselves to death within just a few short months. Well, this goose has endured pretty much everything. 100 degree weather, rainstorms, snowstorms, or well, southern style snowstorms, enough to pile a little bit up on the tire at least. And because it has so many factory elements still on it, it will be a good tell of how they do hold up. And I'll get right to that because the first complaint that I saw regularly was that this saddle would delaminate, meaning it would start bubbling up. As you can see, this is the factory mongoose saddle. Still looks great. I was worried it was going to be squishy today because we've had a lot of rain. It wasn't. It was completely dry underneath this. I just wiped it off. And it has held up well. So saddle, check. The drivetrain. This would go to garbage, many said. Just from sitting outside for a week, well, considerably longer than a week and this pro rush still holding in there the clutch working fine you can see a little bit of rust there talk about that in just a second but these pro rush welcome additions to our big box bikes just a couple of years ago and remember pro rush brought with it the wide range free will wider ranges than we had ever seen before this one a cassette so a lot better of course the clutch so welcome and the one by that we begged for for so long. And I'm going to be honest here, I really thought this wouldn't shift out all that well because, you know, these Pro Rush, they could be a little clunky, especially get up to these 8-speed ones. A little clunky, a little iffy in some of the gears. Oddly enough, this has worked super well today. Haven't had any problems. I've had that typical 1 to 2 lag. And you know what I mean if you have one of these. You go from gear 1 to gear 2 and it takes quite a few pedal revolutions before it'll shift over. All the other gears though shifting perfectly well. Even the dork disc still looking oddly good considering what it's been exposed to. A lot of southern sunshine. Also I didn't lube any of this before I came out. I mean standard procedure would be to lubricate a chain that's been exposed to the elements. Nothing. This is running dry as a bone. Again, still working fine. I know this isn't going to be believed, but it is 100% true. I didn't have to add air to these tires. They did bleed off a little bit of air, but not enough to need more before I rode this morning. So, wow on that. This is a little bit of an oddity. I don't know why I get this, but for some reason people will message me through my website to complain. They complain about this shock. These cheap shocks will rust themselves fused together if you leave them outside for a month. Well, still working, still bouncy, still springy. No rust, look at that. Well, a little bit right there on the bolts, but that happens even on expensive. Well, look at this. Example, here's my fun headset. 40 bucks for that stem and look a little bit of rust right there on that bolt. So that happens on bolts. No rust on the factory components, aside from just a little stuff. Nothing bad at all. Let's talk about some of the stuff I added here. Back to the fun with my stem and my handlebars. You know I use this on my Project Ledge X1, which is absolutely amazing to this day. Ironically, this doesn't leak air out, but those expensive carbon 
carbon wheels with their tubeless setup on my X1 project bike, that does leak out some air. So I guess double win here for the X2 on that. But like my X1 project bike, I use the fun stuff, I really like it, good quality stuff, but I do want to mention these grips. The orange grips. See if I can get this. I don't know how I can make this show up on camera. At least through my viewfinder it's not really showing up, but I don't know how well you can see this. See the color transition? On the underside it is dark orange, but I get on the top and it has that aged been sitting for quite a while outside look. More so than I really expected, considering that this is you know, not just cheap, cheap stuff. This is some decent quality components here with fun. But the rubber grips did age quick. See how the color kind of shifts? See if I can roll around just a bit here, but it definitely has faded a lot on these orange grips. Now I know orange, that is one of those colors that does tend to fade. Ironic that I like it so much for Kev Central. Who knew I was a fan of the color orange until I started doing this channel, but they still look okay, I think. Even though they are... Actually, no. No, they don't. They, they look old. They, they look really old, so I might replace those with black or maybe a new set of orange or something. It, actually, no, I'm not, because I'm going to continue leaving this outside. We're going to see how it holds up. And you know, another thing that's faded, too, that I really didn't expect... Along with those grips fading, I don't know how well this shows up, but look at these Shimano. These are the MT200s, and look how that has turned gray. It's no longer black. Let's see if it shows up any better on this side. I had too many shadows here, but this has faded a lot, which shocked me, but it does still work fine. These rotors, I thought, would be rusted to pieces but only a slight hint right there at the bolts. And quiet, that's another thing I expected was a lot of brake noise as soon as I hit these. Nothing. Completely quiet, and they still work. Look at that, you can even see that's kind of grayed on the caliper there. But brakes work, these are my aftermarket brakes. A little fading on the grips. Handlebar's still working. Oh, this fork. Let's talk about this fork. I labeled this project fail because of this fork. The ZTZ fork, it would leak air. I think I only made it about halfway through my introductory ride before it leaked air. And I had a few people comment to me that had this fork. They talked about this lower air chamber, negative air chamber, whatever you want to call it. Down here, I did air that up. But as I messed around with this, I noticed that the fill port here See if I can get this off. This little fill port is kind of bolted on right here as the hex nut. And as I was airing it up, I noticed that had just a little bit of play in it when I got to the tightest point. So I tightened that just a bit, and now it holds air longer. It's not a set it and forget it kind of thing. It will bleed down quickly within a week, but at least now, I can ride it for longer. I still don't trust it though. I do not trust this fork any bit at all. Super low quality. I mean, just look. Look at the play there on this cap. I mean, that is ridiculous that there, I can still barely wobble that. The cap part anyway, not where I tightened it. But also, up here will too leak down. You know, a lot of forks, good forks. You air them up, heck. That Cannondale Lefty that I have has an air fork on it. When I bought it from the bike shop, they said that, please don't fall. When I bought it from the bike shop, they said that they had never put air in it. It had just always held it. I've never put air in it. It is always fine. And I've had that thing for two plus years. This will leak down upper and lower. I still just don't trust this fork. I do not recommend these. And I don't say that lightly. First off, you know, I don't make recommendations. I just share my opinions and experiences, but when I say I don't like something enough that I don't recommend it, that means it's got to be particularly bad. And that's where ZTZ fits in, or as I call it, the rolling death trap. Might as well look at the race face Chester's great, great pedals. Hold up well. See a little bit of rust on the pegs. These are steel pegs, so not, to, not unexpected for that to happen, but 
still spinny, good pedals, race face chesters, and yes, that sticker has held up. Look, it's still white too. I figured that would be either peeled off or yellow. It's the reason that that is still on here. You'll find out. I have plans for a lot of these old crank sets and some other parts. We'll be talking about that soon. And there we go. Months and months out in the elements. How will a mongoose ledge X2, well, also I could say X1, even if you put a few parts on it to modify it, how will it hold up? Pretty darn good, I do believe. Huh, that ZTZ fork, I don't know how well that's showing up on the camera, but getting a pretty cool reflection off it. That's, I guess, one bonus, the holographic looking sticker. But there you go. If you wondered how these will work sitting outside, you don't really have to worry much. They work, even if you don't lubricate, don't maintenance, just set and forget, then get back on. A lot better than even I was expecting, I will admit. Mongoose Ledge X2, months in weather. Next, more exposure. I think I'm gonna put this right back where it was and just keep this experiment going. See how it holds up, see how long before something, I guess, seizes up or quits working. But at current rate, that's gonna be a long, long, long time. Thanks for watching. Do the usual subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell and so on. I have benches out here at Wildwood. I've rebuilt one of them. This, I guess, will be next, but might not do that. I might hold off for a bit because there are lots of changes. I'll show you something. A little add on here. Wildwood, we have a lot of new stuff. There's a lot of new construction and so on going on out here. They have these new kiosks, I believe three or four of them. Pretty nice. If you ever want to come out to Wildwood in Florence, Alabama, it's actually a pretty good trail. There's two sections to it, two sides. This is the section I usually ride, but it's about to change. And I was a little bit, I don't know, kind of worried in a way because they're talking about a lot of green trails. They got some new grant and Imba's gonna come out. They've hired some professional company that does trails. They're gonna add a lot of new green trails, which I guess is good if you get big box bikes. So Kev Central viewers rejoice have even more stuff to ride out at Wildwood with even factory big box bikes. But I was told that they're still gonna do very, very nice full-on mountain bike trails on top of the green trails. They're just doing the green trails first. So if you get a chance, come on out to Wildwood and give it a try, especially before they make changes because I've been riding some of these same, same trails for over a decade without them being changed. Now it's about to change. So get a look while you can before it becomes, you know, a patternized type trail, I guess I'll say. And some of those trails that are professional trails, you know, a lot of them look kind of the same, but they're still fun. Joe Wheeler's fun. It's an easy green trail and a lot of fun. Hey, what about e-bikes? Green trails mean more fun on big box e-bikes or budget e-bikes, so yay. Okay, I've rambled enough. Thanks for watching. End the video and have a great day.